Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and well, I've been, you know, go, I've been away uh, on holidays and that's why you haven't seen any video from me in a long while. I was, I went to Orlando for three weeks, visiting the parks and everything else. And so uh, I didn't, you know, prepare much, uh, only those two videos that they were released a couple of weeks ago, but that was it. I didn't have uh, like anything else or prepare or anything. So that's why I've been away for so long, but I'm back and I expect to uh, keep bringing in some information about the gaming and uh, technology world. But you know, what I want to talk today is that about six months ago, one of the first videos for the channel was talking about the RX 5600 XT, a GPU that I deemed to be quite good at the time and I still think is, especially for the price you could get it, and that will allow you to play any single game you want at decent frame rate and resolution and quality. However, today I'm not going to be talking about this one. I'm going to be talking about this one. Yes, <laughs> and it happens that I have two identical cards. Well, they are not exactly identical. And this happens to be the 5700 non-XT. And as you can see by the, by the title of the video, I call this an underrated card because I honestly even forgot this card existed. I thought they went from 5600 XT to 5700 XT and I really forgot that this card was in the middle of those two. So the difference between uh, this 5700 XT and the 5600 or the 5700 XT is that this card has the same amount of compute unit that the 5600. 5600 XT, however, they are much faster. Also, this card has two extra gigabytes of memory, which brings the boost bandwidth to 256 bits instead of the 192 bits of the uh, 5600 XT. This brings a nice boost to performance to this card to uh, compare to the 5600 XT. And also, you're going to find on YouTube a lot of videos teaching you how to flash this to become a 5700 XT. XT. However, I have to be clear that you are going to only get faster uh, speeds on the memory and in the C and the GPU, but you are not going to unlock new compute units. Okay, they are locked and they are the same as the 5600 XT, but you can get a quite good boost. And the 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 weirdest part and the reason I brought this card to the channel is because ever since I did the 5600 XT video, I wanted to do a 5700 XT video, but I don't have that card. So I've been looking for it on the used market for a while, but I have never found to um, like the price is the right price for me to pay. I see the car like uh, $180, $190 around. And I, I was like, no, I'm not going to pay that much for a card that where I'm going to make a video and that's it. However, However, looking and looking and waiting, I found the 5600 non-XT just by pure luck because I didn't remember it existed. And the weird part about this is that this card cost me less than the 5600 XT, which makes no sense, right? And I think it's because there is not a big demand for this because a lot of people forgot this existed. And I was checking and I know each country is different, each reality is different, but by checking the UK and the United States, I could see that that is the case um, in those two territories. You can find the 56, uh, 5700 non-XT at the same price or cheaper than most of the 5600 XT. And as I said, again, I think the reason is because most people don't remember that this exists and when they are looking for their, the demand is higher for the XT version of the 5700. So this is a good thing that you, you know, if you're looking for a new GPU, you can uh, just check prices just in case you can find this. I paid $130 for this one, which is less than I paid for the 5600 XT, even though six months ago, yes, but the 5600 XT is still around that price on the used market if you check. So before continuing and giving you my conclusions, let's check. 
So first I have to say that the video you're seeing on the screen, they are a speed up so I can show you more of the frame time and frame rate graphics that you see on the upper left of your screen. I'm starting with a game that um, is, didn't have the best launch. It has gotten better over time. So I think it's a good uh, example to start on what 2023 games are, which is The Last of Us Part 1. As you can see here, and as you saw in the introduction, the game runs most mostly at 60 FPS and, you know, very stable. However, there are very specific points where it can drop. I think it's either a shader compilation or a lack of VRAM. After all, I'm playing on high and this causes some issues. But most of the time, like 90 95% of the time you're going to have a very stable 60 FPS experience. Uh, in here, for example, you're going to see there is some big uh, drop stuttering and then it starts to go at around 55 to 60 FPS. And that's what you can expect on those specific situations. But most of the game you're going to be playing fine. Of course, you can lower the resolution or the quality to have a much better experience if you want that. But you know, I don't mind those uh, drop from time to time if they are not like big in the middle of a game or something so it will depend on you but i think this is a good start to show these card capabilities anyway as you can see here the ram is helping and the game is behaving quite good um those uh, a frame time looks almost perfect if it wasn't for those little drops that happen for time to time now, Howard's Legacy is another game that was released broken, basically, um, with a lot of issues, but it has been improved over time. As you can see here, for example, now the game is running much better than it used to. Uh, obviously, I didn't test it when it came out with a 5700, so I'm not quite sure how it was, but uh, it's clear that this game had had some improvements. In this case, anyway, we're playing at 4040p high with FSR on quality, and as you can see, the frame time and frame rate graph are very stable and very good. Also, I have noticed, I don't know, what why, but it seems that the game is loading much faster than it used to. As you can see, as we approach the castle, normally when we got to the doors, we had to wait a little bit for it to enter because it was, it was supposed to load. So I don't know if it's loading much more in advance or what, but and you, you can see here that I'm entering immediately, which normally it used to take a, a couple of seconds before the door opened. Um, here there is a little glitch that I saw in the door, as you can see. I'm not quite sure what that related to, but other than that, I couldn't see anything particularly the worrying that um, show any problems. As you can see, we're barely using six gigabytes of VRAM, and with this game on high and 1440p, so we have more than enough to play this game with this card, and the card is behaving excellent as you can see here the door open in just like one second normally this outdoor area will take like three or four seconds before it could open so yeah no this is really good stuff here and we are seeing this car performing its best as you can see we even have some margins there and the reason I say uh, we have some margin because normally I, I prefer to leave some margin uh, GPU. I don't want to be pegged at 99% all the time just in case there are particular things that require more uh, GPU power because it's more complex or anything like that. So always we have some, you know, um, a space for it to not drop under 60. In the case of Resident Evil 4, that is one game that, you know, it's being infamous for the amount of VRAM is requesting and crashing if you don't have it, which is not right behavior. It should just stutter or but it shouldn't be crashing anyway and here you can see that the game is running with a frame time and frame graph that is perfect um i have said this many times but honestly i'm finding this card to behave really really good in this case we can see um resident evil and this particular area that i like to test due to the fact that there is lots of uh, characters uh, there is a lot of different um, areas and geometry and it's, even though it's not open world evidently it's still quite open and it allows you to see a lot of geometry and explosions and there is fog and everything all kind of effects happening which uh, you know should stress the card and i feel that this is behaving really really good and you can see we have no issues and if you are wondering why i cap the frame at 60 is because I like to get to that point. That's what I want to test. If this car is at least able 
to uh, play at 60 FPS at certain combination of resolution and graphics. Then you obviously can will go into uncap and put your own spin on the graphics. Here, in Returnal is a game I like to test because it's a fast-paced game, and in this case, every frame counts. And as you can see here, the game is behaving really good. Once again, I'm repeating myself, but we are having a very, very stable frame time and um, frame rate graph with no issues at 1440p high with FSR in quality, and we are using only 5.5 gigabytes of VRAM. So these are the sort of things that, as you can see, we still can have very good experience even if we don't have the uh, more, um, you know, if we don't have a car with a lot of VRAM, just setting the set, just setting everything correctly, you will get uh, a lot of good performance without having to go over the amount of RAM set for the uh, GPU. So in this case, you can see Returnal is running very, very good on this car. No problem whatsoever. There is a lot of effect, particles, and everything is running really good. I'm really surprised by how good this GPU is. You know, uh, at the time when this car came out, I have a 3090, so evidently um, it is a much better car in terms of performance than this one is. However, for the conscious uh, gamer or person on a budget that was trying to squeeze every penny out of their budget, I think this will have been a fantastic car, especially if you flash it and get those cores uh, over the normal specs. Uh, here I overclock a little bit and you can see I can get up to 1900 megahertz from time to time and the memory is at 1800 megahertz. I, uh, you know, I tested this game and I left it in here um, just because when the game is behaving correctly, it runs really like very good mm, at 60 frames per second. Sometimes you have some dips when something happens, but it's not major. However, um, there are, it's a weird behavior that I don't know if it's related to the graphic card, it's related to the VRAM, which I don't think because as you can see, we are barely using 2.6 gigabytes of VRAM on this game, which is insane. Um, on high settings that we're using so little VRAM, but well, that's what it says. However, my concern is that you're going to see that sometimes the game just stop. You see, like right now, and it's going to happen from time to time. It just completely stops. It's not a shader compilation because it's not a stuttering or anything like that, and you're seeing only like half the time it gets stuck. I don't know if it's because this game is not very compatible with the 57. Uh, 700 or it's a, a combination of my PC or something. So I thought, if this is just a problem with my computer, then, you know, if you don't have this issue, you can see the performance when it's running OK. Um, but I'm not quite sure what's going on here with this game in particular and this car. As I said, it could be a combination of my GPU, CPU, motherboard, RAM or something that is causing this issue. But I thought to give you anyway some impression about how this game runs on the 5700A non-XT, I'm gonna say XT, um, but as you can see when the game runs OK, it's running really, really good at 60 FPS. Jedi Survivor is one of those games that did not launch very well, and I still don't think it is uh, in quite the state it should. However, I thought, well, this is one of the newest games on the list, so why not test it? Because I know some people are going to want to play this, so why don't test it anyway in the uh, way it is right now? So as you can see here, the game is running at 1080p with FSR in quality mode at medium settings to achieve that smooth 60 FPS. Of course, if you are, if you don't mind I'm getting 30 FPS, you're going to be able to play this at 1440p, no issues whatsoever. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to squeeze as much performance of this car as I could. And as you, as you can see, I'm barely using around 80%. So probably we could have done with just 1080p without having to uh, require FSR. However, there are some cinematics that the GPU gets up to 90%. So maybe in those cases, may, we may drop some frames. I can confirm or com be completely sure, but but I think it could be the case. Anyway, I think I think even at 1080p with FSR quality, the game is still looks quite good at medium setting. And this is a card that you know you can set up to your uh, liking. This is a game that we know for sure is not very well optimized. It still has a lot of problems. But even then, we can see that we are having a very good experience. So yeah, this is a game that you will able to enjoy with the 5700 without so much issues. And finally, Spider-Man Miles Morales. And as you can see here, well, there is not much to say. All 
that I just set the game at 1440p, no resolution scaling, no FSR, and just high quality, and the game is running flawlessly. Like, what I mean flawlessly is really flawlessly. The game never dropped, well, maybe it dropped a frame here or there, but you know what I mean. The game is really set at 60 FPS with no issues, no matter if you are just traversing over the city, if you're fighting, no matter how many particles there are on the screen. And as you can see by the usage of the GPU, we are still not at 99%. So in any case, if anything, you know, a little bit uh, more demanding comes to the screen, you will still be able to hold those 60 FPS. Of course, you can use something like FSR uh, in quality mode, 1440p, and unlock the frame cap so you can go over 70 or 80 fps and that will be um a choice for many but you know my my goal is always to show that combinations that will give you a good uh, experience and to show you that at least you're going to get to that so 1440p high so i would say the 5700 is still a 1440p car in most cases but maybe for the newer games you are going to have to go down to 1080p to be able to enjoy them but i still think that you know if you get it at a good price uh this is going to be a very good investment if you're trying to upgrade your pc from something older than this so as you can see the 5700 non-xt is quite a good car it has 8 gigabytes of vram which well we have discussed that in the channel before and for the price you can get it i think it's a very nice price okay um if you get it for around 130 even 140 dollars i think it's very worth it for that amount of money if you're looking for a used graphic cards um and all the games we check we could play well not all of them but most of them we could play at 1440p i know we were using fsr most of the time but i think that's the point of that technology is to be able to get better frame rates better graphic quality maintaining a good resolution at least um on perceived resolution so why not use it so um if i could play a 1440p fsr quality i didn't even have to go to balance then i will use it because i think those are good technologies that improve and, and give uh, a longer life to all gpus and in this case it did wonders it didn't work for every single game and we have to play a couple of them at 1080p but even so i think it's still a great car and those games were not even the you know the best um, performance games when it comes to ports to PC. So I think the 5700 is honestly a very good card that will allow you to play every single game. And as you can see, I tested only like very modern games. And the reason is because obviously if those games run well, you're going to be able to play Fortnite, you're going to be able to play Apex Legends, you're going to be able to play Call of Duty in multiplayer games and any other uh, eSport game because those games normally have lots of settings for you to have a good experience frame rate because the point of those games is to be able to be played by as many games as possible instead ga games like jedi survivor of the last of us they are looking for the big, biggest quality biggest three play single player experiences so obviously they have a different target so as you can see if they, you can play those games you're surely going to be able to play any other game uh, esports title and that's why I mostly test triple A PC games because those are the more demanding ones and as you, you saw honestly um, this is a very good GPU the build quality of this is, is very good and I'm so happy that I got the same model for the 5700 even though you know I wasn't looking exactly to have the same model I don't normally care about what model I get but I was happy to get the MSI Gaming X because I love this car I, I honestly love the design the um, temperatures are quite good but I don't think you're going to get wrong with any model except maybe for the founders or the um, you know base edition that AMD does because that one is going to get hotter but other than that I think this is an excellent GPU the 5700 I think is one of the forgotten cars or at least for me it was forgotten and for what i can see on ebay at least in the uk and the united states it seems that many people have forgotten it too because as you can see what is happening is that um most um people looking for the 5700 xt don't re even remember this car exists so i hope you like this video as always please if you like it enjoy subscribe that it will help me a lot to keep getting more content to you and see you on the next video see you